Hi everyone, welcome to uh, welcome to the Studying Arts and Design in the UK webinar. My name is Semrai Alçın I am the Education Manager at the British Council, working here for 17 years. Today I'm joined by Rosie Cumber from University of the Arts and Jake uh, Longley, Goldsmiths University of London. Uh, welcome both. Uh, before starting the webinar, I would like to give you a bit of information about the British Council. We are the United Kingdom's international organization for cultural relations and education opportunities. We work with over 100 countries in the fields of arts and culture, English language, education and civil society. We deliver our work in line with our global policy of equal opportunity and welcome people from all sections of the communities. Our key role is to support you with your UK education journey by providing most up-to-date and accurate information on studying and living in the UK. Let me share some housekeeping notes with you. This webinar is open to all students and parents. Uh, the webinar will be in English and we are unable to offer any translation uh, during the uh, live event. The session will start for, uh, sorry, uh, the session will last for one hour. We'll record this webinar and share it widely through our channels. Our panelists will be happy to answer your questions. Please write them in the question and answer section of this platform. We'll do the questions at the end. Uh, this week we are organizing seven web webinars. We have uh, three more webinars on computer science, business and jobs of the future in the next two days. Don't forget that subject specific webinars are suitable for potential undergraduate uh, students. Jobs of the futures uh, webinar is um, suitable for everyone. Just to remind, if you are interested in similar activities, please make sure that uh, you follow us on our uh, on our British Council social media channels. Now, I would like to hand over to Rosie to start uh, the session. Rosie, floor is yours. Thank you, Semra. Thank you so much. Um, OK, just bear with me one second whilst I um, start sharing my screen with you all. Um, hopefully my presentation won't do anything silly like that. Um, OK, so thank you everybody for joining today. My name is Rosie Cumber. I am an international student recruitment officer from University of the Arts London or UAL. Um, we're currently number two in the world for art and design, um, something we're very, very proud of. We, we feel this shows our um, fantastic reputation within the sort of world of art and design. Um, while we are sort of um, one university, uh, we are made up of six different colleges as well, which I'll go into a little bit more detail later on. But just to give you an overview, we have Camberwell College of Arts, we have um, Central St Martins, uh, Chelsea College of Arts, London College of Communication, London College of Fashion and Wimbledon College of Arts as well. So. I will talk a little bit uh, later on about our different subject areas that you can expect to find at uh, UAL, but also I am here to talk to you about portfolios today. Um, you know, I think it's really fantastic that you're all here thinking about your creative futures um, at UAL. You know, it's not just about the now, but it's about how we prepare you for um, future creative work in the industry. I think now more than ever, people are looking for creative ways to um, to to work, to live their lives. Uh, whilst the pandemic has obviously been an, an extremely um, hard thing for everyone, I think a, it's brought us together and B, it's it's created this uh, fantastic opportunity for creatives in, in many, many different parts of art and design to um, see, to get their designs heard and, and to really kind of um, show everybody that art and design isn't just about a nice picture on a wall. You know, it can be about many, many different things. And so it's a very, very exciting time to be considering um, a future in the creative industries. Uh, so as mentioned, six colleges, but we're one university, UAL. OK, so portfolios then. So it's worth just note noting that not every course that we um, offer uh, offers uh, a portfolio. And indeed at other universities as well, not every art and design course will require 
a portfolio, but um, these are really important pieces of work for the courses that do ask for them. Um, some of our courses, uh, it'll be a different type of portfolio, such as a, a mini portfolio. And also um, at this time, it's worth bearing in mind that our portfolios are being uh, more digital digitalized. So uh, they're more digital because of um, obviously not being able to travel, for example, at the moment. So it's worth bearing that in mind when um, when we're thinking about portfolios and and how we might want to present them to those people that are, are perhaps looking at them either in person or on a screen. So here's just a, a nice quote here. So we like to think of a portfolio as a window into your own unique world through which we can see your skills, personality and potential. It's a collection of your work demonstrating how your creativity has developed over a period of time. So it's worth thinking about then. So what is a portfolio? Well, uh, a portfolio is essentially a visual representation of you. We like to think of it as a window into your creative mind. Um, it should reflect your interests, technical skills, uh, your ability to work with different materials, themes, techniques, and it should also demonstrate how um, how you research, develop and plan your ideas as well. Don't forget that portfolios should be professional, but also human. So we don't need perfection. Um, we want to see you amongst the pages. So don't be afraid to show your personality as well. Um, what should you include in your portfolio? So uh, research is often something that's forgotten, but is definitely something that's uh, very, very important. I'll be talking a little bit more later on about that, but um, you want to use primary and secondary uh, research. Um, but the most important thing I personally think is the development of your ideas. So, um, you know, we want to see the final piece. Of course, that's very, very important. But we also want to see those beginning sketches and, and how your ideas um, developed from from those uh, beginning sort of ideas, perhaps inspirations right the way through to your final piece. Um, we're also interested in seeing pages from your sketchbook as well. This is obviously, um, you know, we're aware that these aren't the final pieces, but we think it's it's a really good way to kind of see how you're working um, and see how uh, your ideas start to come to life. Um, your final pieces as well are, of course, extremely important. Um, we usually like to see these or a, a tip that we like to say is to put um, your best work both at the beginning of your portfolio and at the end as well, both to give a good first impression, but also um, a great final impression as well. Um, we want to see your most recent work, even if it's not finished. As I mentioned, we're not looking for perfection. Um, and we want to also want to see any other types of work that's that's relevant to your application, including um, perhaps independent work such as summer schools you might have attended, uh, e experiments that perhaps you've you've done on your own or with groups, um, perhaps examples of collaboration, design development, um, etc. As well. So considering your audience, so of course uh, you're the one that's making this. Um, portfolio, which is which is really great because you have all the power when it comes to showing us exactly what you want to see. But it is also very important to consider the person that will be looking at your work. So in uh, in this case at UAL, it's the academics. So um, instead of presenting chronologically, we advise a strong narrative. So think of it like a story. So you have a beginning, you have a middle and you have um, an end as well, uh, like a nice piece of music or a good a good book. Um, it's a really nice way to think about the de development of those pieces and how the person looking at it can best understand it as well. So um, give your work room to breathe. Don't put too much on one page. Uh, how might academics read the layouts? So are larger images more important? Um, are images on their own? So the final pieces perhaps to give them more stand uh, to make them stand out a bit more. Um, and in the UK, we read pages left to right, uh, top to bottom examples. So um, you might want to think about how uh, an academic from the UK is going to read that. 
So as I just mentioned, we want to tell a visual story with um, the portfolio. So uh, we put these into three different categories. So you've got the research side of your portfolio, the development side and also the final outcome as well. So I'm just going to go into that in a bit more detail. Um, research. So this is something I think that a lot of people, um, a lot of students often forget to include in their work. So we want uh, primary research, um, including your personal responses to that, and uh, as well as secondary research, um, which should be credited with the artist or designer's name as well. These are basically, the, the research is there to show that you understand the topic, um, that you uh, have a, a good sort of understanding of exactly what it is that you are creating. Um, and I think sometimes when students don't do this, often we think that, um, um, we see that perhaps actually the student might be better for a, another course and sometimes we can advise on this, um, but that's why this is, is very, very um, important. Um, and uh, just a bottom note there, you don't need to reproduce um, research references. OK, so the next stage is uh, the development side of uh, the portfolio journey. So. Um, basically with this uh, it's kind of similar to what I was saying about including the early sketches. So we want to see a range of early responses, ideas, options, choices that perhaps you've considered before starting to really, um, uh, you know, create your final piece. So the evolution of your ideas, as you can see here in the image on the left, you've got um, some black and white images and then we've got also some added with colour and texture as well. Um, we want to see uh, your material experimentation, tests, samples, if it's a more textile based uh, portfolio, for example, um, and any models and making processes as well. And the outcome. So we want you to present the outcome of the project clearly, um, show the work in its ideal contest. So, for example, as it says here, you know, if you've created jewellery, we want to see jewellery on the body um, so that we can see the size and exactly how it fits the model. You know, have you thought about um, how it might hang on the body you, with the materials that you've used? Um, you know, for example, uh, architecture, if you've done architecture, perhaps we want to see a collage into a specific environment and um, think about it based on the type of course that you are wanting to um, to get onto. Um, also show the materials that you have used or would like to have used and feel free to add any short captions to summarise the outcome. Uh, don't be embarrassed of imperfection. Um, you know, don't worry um, about any uh, drawings that perhaps you, you know, perhaps you're not a very strong um, sketcher and that's absolutely fine. It's more about the ideas. It's more about seeing your, uh, as I said, it's a window into your mind. So it's more about seeing the process, um, which is just as important as the final piece. So just as I've been saying, you know, it's all about the research, the development and then the outcome. Uh, don't forget to credit any secondary sources and be mindful of your presentation as well. So, um, you know, perhaps making uh, mounted, um, if you're using samples, mount them, uh, include high resolution images and include labels and indicators so that the person looking at your portfolio knows exactly what they're looking at. OK. So it's also um, good to include sometimes some pages from your sketchbook. Uh, you can read this piece here, which just says sketchbooks show your research and help us to understand how you make decisions. They form the background to the projects displayed in your portfolio and together these tell the whole story of a creative journey. So don't be afraid to show us into your sketchbook as well. OK, so just a few top tips from us then. So presentation is is very important. Start the present start and end the portfolio with your strongest pieces of work, as I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, bring whole sketchbooks if you're coming to um, a, a, an interview in person. But of course, as I mentioned earlier, lots of these interviews are now going to be digitalized or um, online. So make sure that you're taking photographs of your pieces in good light. Um, with your perhaps white balance on um, a lot of smartphones have these now or perhaps if you are paying for professional uh, photography just bear this in mind um, we want to see your pieces against a blank wall or in a relevant setting um, 
And take care of your work, keep it flat, remove random blank sheets and fix any charcoal drawings well. Digital portfolio. So I won't, I won't read everything here, but I'll, I'll leave that on the screen there for you to have a little look at. Um, at the moment at UAL, we use uh, a platform called PebblePad. Um, other universities might use um, another uh, type of, of platform, but this is the one that we use. Um, it's the same guidelines as a physical portfolio, but obviously bearing in mind that the academic will be viewing these on a screen. So make sure that the pictures aren't too small, make sure um, the screen isn't too crowded. Um, bear in mind that most laptop screens are obviously landscape in format, so hopefully you will change your, your pages so that they are too. Um, and also make sure it's compatible in all formats. Some uh, people will be using PCs, others will be using Macs, so make sure that, uh, that you bear that in mind as well. Um, feel free to use some uh, work from independent projects that you've used as well. Uh, again, I'm just going to leave this up here for a second. You can read um, through that um, and I know that this, this is being recorded as well, so feel free to look at this um, in your own time. But we, we very much encourage students to use work from perhaps um, if they've been to studios or uh, clubs, short courses perhaps at UAL or any hobbies, please uh, make sure to, to include these. Um, but just present it well and include all of your development as well as outcomes. And also, last but not least, on the portfolio side of things, things to avoid. So avoid chaotic presentation unless it's, uh, as it says, important to the project. Um, we really want to see that you can edit well. So uh, work selection is, is very, very important. It's an, a very important skill, whether you're using a short film, edit it down to, so that it's uh, necessary. Um, avoid too much text. Um, keep the font very uh, simple um, and consider the layout as well. Building your portfolio takes time, so please don't rush it at the last minute. And for more advice, you can visit our website uh, www.arts.ac.uk forward slash portfolio. And there are various um, uh, videos on there, including advice on topics of how to structure your portfolio, what to include and preparing a portfolio as well. We will be having some of our academics conducting portfolio advice webinars later um, in the summer. So please do come and join us for those as well. OK, so I'm just going to uh, spend the next 15 um, or 10 minutes or so uh, talking about the different subject areas at UAL. So um, we have uh, subjects across seven different areas. We're based in, in London, so uh, it's you know one of the best places in the world for, for the subjects of art and design. Our first subject area is art, where we have courses in fine art, photography, drawing, painting, sculpture, digital arts. Um, these are based at Central St Martins, Chelsea College of Arts and Camberwell as well. Um, you know, we really like to push the boundaries as well as having the lovely traditional side of, of arts. We also like having um, subjects such as photography within the arts section. This is more commonly um, based in journalism, but it's now a means um, as, as an expression of art um, in practice as well. Uh, so the next subject area is communication, where we have uh, subjects such as graphic design, uh, branding and identity, illustration, um, photojournalism, lots and lots of different and very broad um, subjects there. Um, we have similar courses at multiple colleges of ours, so please do check. They will all be slightly different. Um, lots of these will be based at uh, colleges such as Camberwell College of Arts, um, London College of Communication or LCC as we call it um, and uh, across many of our colleges so just make sure you go on our website you know we have over a, a hundred um, undergraduate courses and we also have courses at other levels as well so make sure that you um, you choose the course for you. So our design courses include architecture, design for branded spaces, textile design. Uh, lots of these courses have a really critical relationship as well. So courses such as 3D design and architecture are very much two courses that are sort of work very um, hand in hand. So a really, really important area of design. So we also have uh, fashion courses. Uh, these are based at Central St Martins and London College of Fashion. So um, 
it's this is our largest uh, probably range of courses um, with over 60 different courses at London College of Fashion alone. Um, as you can see here, we have co uh, fashion courses in design, communication, marketing, management. Uh, we have lots and lots of big ties um, to the fashion industry at UAL with alumni such as Alexander McQueen, Jimmy Choo, uh, and just to name a few um, big names from the fashion world there. Um, so, you know, a lot of students, I think, just think about menswear or women's wear, but I think it's also really important to uh, to look at these other areas of fashion as well, because there might be the course for you there. Uh, we have media, which is our next um, subject area. So media, we have um, a lot of cross boundary uh, subjects such as journalism, advertising, uh, visual merchandising and branding publishing lots of fantastic courses a lot of these based at london college of communication um and uh you can see some of the students work from graphic and media design and illustration and visual media on the screen there as well performing arts so these courses are mostly based at uh, wimbledon college of arts um, we have really strong ties to the theatre and film industry in London, being being in central London. We're very, very lucky um, about that. Um, we have courses in theatre design, costume design, um, acting and performance, um, technical arts and special effects, makeup for the theatre. We have our own theatre uh, at, at Wimbledon College of Arts and uh, lots of fantastic facilities. Um, and last but not least, we have our newest um, subject area, which is screen. Uh, so lots of fantastic um, subjects and courses, including film and television, animation, virtual reality, sound arts, and probably our biggest and most, well, our, our large, our sort of fastest expanding area, which is games design. Um, as you can imagine, especially this last year, this, this subject has um, got uh, really gained in popularity. OK, so I'm just going to talk a bit about our, our pre degree courses. Um, these are something that uh, we really encourage students, not just international students, but UK students uh, sort of know to, that they will go straight from their um, their school uh, and most of them will go on to a pre degree course. Um, not all courses require a pre degree course, but um, they are really, really a great way to uh, develop skills, experience and uh, of course, the portfolio of work needed to get to that further study. Um, a number of our pre-degree courses are specifically designed for international students. Um, and we also have two foundation uh, courses which are open to all students, as well as short courses, um, which some of which are uh, a condition of entry to some of our courses as well. So why should students do a pre-degree? Well, they'll develop the skills, as I just mentioned. They get to experiment and explore different subjects and techniques that perhaps uh, you haven't had the chance to try before. And also, we want to make sure that you are following the right path for you. So, you know, I speak to our academics on a daily basis and they will often say to me that, um, you know, Rosie, my foundation years was the best year because I really got to experiment and learn what was the right area for me, as well as getting to meet students um, from many, many different areas and just have um, a really, really good. Uh, it's hard. It's hard work, but a really fantastic year of getting to know um, yourself as an artist and getting to further experiment with your skills. Um, we have two different types of uh, well, we have different types of pre degree courses, which I will explain shortly. So we have the international preparation courses specifically for uh, international students. Lots of students from Turkey indeed come on to study these. Um, these particular courses are based at London College of Communication and London College of Fashion. So we have the introduction to the study of design, media and screen and the introduction to the study of fashion preparation for fashion and also preparation for design, media and screen. Both of these courses are one year in length and will enable you to um, go on to an undergraduate course at either one of these colleges. And our other sort of pre degree courses are our foundation uh, diplomas in art and design. Uh, these are based at either Camberwell College of Arts or uh, Central St Martins. They allow you again to explore, experiment, build a portfolio. Um, at CSM or Central St Martins, we have um, foundation specialist routes in 3D design and architecture, fashion and textiles, fine art and graphic design uh, communication. 
or graphic communication design rather. And at Camberwell, you can specialise in the, in the subject areas of art, communication and design. Um, there's two different routes to these. So you can either go straight onto a specialist route um, or you can do what's called a diagnostic. Um, you can go on a diagnostic route, which basically means that the first 10 weeks of your course um, will cover all the different areas and then you get to specialise. Uh, this will all be done in uh, conjunction with um, uh, your uh, tutors and your professors. Um, you know, it's not just a decision that you have to make on your own after these 10 weeks. It'll be based on sort of how well you've done, what you've enjoyed. It's a very collaborative decision and a very exciting time for students. OK, we also have over 100, uh, 100 courses within our undergraduate study in those seven different subject areas, which I spoke about earlier. Each of these typically lasts three years, although, um, you know, some of them might last uh, an extra year if perhaps you decide to do a year in industry or um, a year in another uh, subject area as well. And uh, just in case you're already thinking about it, we also have um, a lot of many, many different postgraduate study courses um, at UAL. We're home to Europe's largest postgraduate art and design community. Um, we're also getting more and more postgraduate scholarships every year, which is very, very exciting. Um, and a lot of them are specifically for um, international students as well. Um, and postgraduate courses tend to last uh, typically one to two years um, of study. Um, so helping you to apply then. So in Turkey, we have two official representatives who I work with uh, very, very closely. We have um, a representative called uh, British Side and uh, another representative called the British Education Bureau. So both of these are absolutely fantastic at offering academic advisory sessions, application assistance, visa advice, um, dedicated support throughout the application process. Apologies, I think I put a timer on this page, so hopefully you can still read that. Um, please visit our website at arts.ac.uk forward slash Turkey for more information. Um, I also, I know it's a common question about scholarships as well. So while we don't have many scholarships available, available for pre-degree or undergraduate courses, um, many of our students like to um, uh, as I said, stay on for postgraduate study where we have lots of scholarships, but also the Turkish government um, have known been known to provide um, scholarships for students for undergraduate courses um, and also um, scholarships uh, from different businesses. Um, so not just the government, but I know that there have definitely been businesses that have been able to provide scholarships for Turkish students. So please don't hesitate to uh, do your research. And as I said, these two representatives, so British side and British Education Bureau, will be able to help you um, with this as well. Um, so just to finish then, before I pass over to my colleague Jake, um, we have our lovely chancellor here, Grayson Perry, who is very, very famous in the art and design world. Both him and his wife um, are artists, designers, creators. Um, he's pictured here in a uh, a graduation gown. So uh, Grayson, every year he will ask students to design a gown for him to wear at the graduation ceremony. Um, and this was the particular item that he chose to wear uh, on this year, uh, which is just brilliant. It's really, really exciting for those students that get chosen um, from such a fantastic flamboyant creative that Grayson Perry is. Um, he has said here that the UAL, uh, that UAL, sorry, is the world's biggest factory for trouble. And he means this in all the all the good ways. So, for example, pushing boundaries, um, uh, you know, we, we offer not only the fantastic traditional art and design education, but we also offer that um, really forefront, uh, forward thinking, pushing boundary sort of education as well. Um, you know, and as mentioned, it's a really, really exciting time for students to be thinking about um, their studies in art and design. So I'm just going to finish there then. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, that's all from me. Uh, I'm, and I'm going to hand over to Jake. And just a reminder that if you've got any questions, please uh, put them in the chat box and Jake and I will answer those um, at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rosie. Um... Jake, I'll put you on the screen now. Um, 
Rosie, by the way, we have some questions. Um, so you may want to read them now, but we'll do the questions, as you said, at the end. No problem. Thank you, everybody. Jake, it's your turn now. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rosie. That was great. Uh, really wonderful to hear so much about um, UL and all the wonderful things you guys do. Um, hopefully everyone can see my screen. So my name is Jake and I work for um, Goldsmiths University of London. I'm the International Student Recruitment Officer responsible helping Turkish students come to study at Goldsmiths. So my contact details are here on the screen. If you've got any questions, you can email me or you can message me on WhatsApp or Telegram or kind of any messaging app. Always happy to help, but don't worry if you don't get these now, they'll come up again at the end. But like I said, I'm the person at Goldsmiths who helps Turkish students come and send at Goldsmiths, so feel free to contact me if you've got any questions. So we're going to introduce you to Goldsmiths quickly here. So we were founded in 1891 and we've been part of the University of London since 1904. The University of London is a federation of 17 different universities in London. So this includes UCL, King's College London, London School of Economics, the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, lots of wonderful and prestigious universities like this. So we're really proud to be part of this group. We're the 60th most international university in the world and Goldsmiths gets constantly ranked inside the UK's top 25 for the quality of our research. Um, in 2017, you can see on the left here, we were voted one of the UK's top creative and political universities by students. However, this gets voted for like most years and likewise, um, London in 2017 was voted the joint top best university city in the world. But I believe London got this on its own outright in 2018, 2019 and maybe last year as well, I can't remember, but definitely 2018 and 2019. Excuse me. So Goldsmiths, we um, like I said, we've been part of the University of London since 1904. We're a single site campus based in southeast London. We're in an area called New Cross. I'll show you where this is in a minute. We've got about 10,000 students and these come from 141 different countries. So we're quite a small university. The average size of a UK university is 17,000 students. So we're about half the size of that. We're still a really, a really diverse student body, um, even amongst our 10,000 students. About 2,000 of those students come from outside the EU. Um, we have a focus on the creative arts, entrepreneurial business, computing, psychology, social sciences and humanities. We've taught some really influential alumni during our time as well. Um, we've got um, in those subject areas I kind of talked about just, just then, we've got about 18 departments, I think it is, and 10 are considered inside the, the world's elite. So we're fourth in the UK for design and art. We're third in the UK for the um, psychology research intensity. We're also ranked first in the UK for a lot of our departments for the research intensity of our programmes. Um, we're ranked seventh in the world for media, 14th in the world for art and design, 42nd for sociology, 50th for performing arts. Um, I think computing, we're inside the top 100 or top 150. So a lot of our departments are really highly thought of around the world. So London itself, some of you guys will know, some of you have been here, some of you will know it from films and TV, but it's obviously quite a big place. Um, there's 8 million people that live here. We've got 250 museums. We have 320 languages spoken by people who come from 240 different nationalities. So it's a really diverse metropolitan place to be. Lots of different communities and cultures to learn from and live with um, here in this city. Over 6,000 restaurants. We have uh, 500,000 students in the city, 15 million visitors annually, and that's more than New York, Sydney and San Francisco combined. We've got 500 um, cinema screens, 32,000 music performances happen each year, and that includes 250 different music festivals in the city. So that's everything from like pop music, rock, rock music, dance, hip hop, metal, but then also if you want to find an Indian music festival or a Turkish music festival, you can, they all happen here. We've got over 100 theatres, obviously with our famed West End, which is comparable to Broadway in New York. Five international airports around the city, like outside the city, all between maybe half an hour to an hour and a half's travel time, depending where you're starting from. We've got 143 parks across the city. Like we're actually considered one of the greenest city in Europe uh, because of the amount of um, green spaces we have. There's loads of places to go and just find some peace and quiet and calm. London is synonymous with sport as well. And a really great example of this is the 19 professional football clubs we have. And I think about seven of them are in the Premier League. And then, yeah, 2000 years of history now. It's been, uh, it's quite an old city, but there's still a lot of new and amazing things happening here. There's a really exciting future ahead of it as well. 
So like I said earlier, um, Goldsmith is based in an area called New Cross in southeast London. So this is us at the bottom right of the map where it says Goldsmith in pink letters. Where we are in New Cross, we have two train stations that are right next to our campus. And both these train stations go into London Bridge, which if you look in the centre of the map, it says the Shard in big letters. That's where London Bridge is. So the Shard is the tallest building in Western Europe. A lot of you may know it. It looks like a shard of glass coming out of the ground. But when you get to there, you're at the start of the city centre. So there's some things to see. So you can see Big Ben just by the left of the river. So this is where the House of Parliament is, where our government is. Just to the left of there is Buckingham Palace, where the Queen lives. So from our campus to Big Ben, or Buckingham Palace, you're looking at about maybe 20 minutes. Um, just north of where it says Buckingham Palace, it says Selfridges. This is a really famous department store. It's on Oxford Street, our really sort of famous shopping street. But again, from Goldsmiths at the bottom right to Selfridges at the top left, the other side of the map, you're looking at about 25 minutes travel time maximum. So it's really easy to get from our campus to almost anywhere in central London. Um, super quick to do as well. Um, it's a great place to be. So I talked a little bit earlier about the alumni that we've taught, so I'll introduce some quickly for you now. Um, so the photo of the gentleman uh, in the centre of the screen here, this is Steve McQueen. Um, he's the first black director to win a Best Picture Oscar at the Oscar Awards in Hollywood. He won in 2013 for the film 12 Years a Slave. Um, he studied with us, I think, in the late 90s. Um, but he's a really amazing, obviously, film director, but an artist in his own right. Um, at the Tate Modern, one of our most famous art galleries, our biggest art galleries, there was a career retrospective um, exhibition of his recently um, that had all of his artwork, his photography, clips of his films, things like this. And it was really amazing. Um, Goldsmiths as well is sort of synonymous with the young British artist movement, which happened in the early 1990s, the late 1980s. Um, and one of the people we taught who was like the leader of that is uh, Damien Hurst. So he won the Turner Arts Prize in 1992. We've taught people like Lucian Freud, who was with us, I believe, in like the 1950s, and Vivian Westwood, really famous fashion designer, um, Anthony Gormley, um, a sculptor, and also people like Mary Quant. Mary Quant's a name that a lot of us may not know, but we certainly you know her work. She was a fashion designer in the 1960s and 1970s and she's the person responsible for the miniskirt. She was one of Goldsmith's students and we're super proud of her. There's lots of people on this list like musicians like KTB, um, James Blake who some of you may know for working with people like Kendrick Lamar and also doing his own music. Um, Damon Albarn, in, in fact the whole band Blur studied at Goldsmiths as well and the list kind of goes on and on and on and we're all super proud of these um, amazing artists and creatives that have studied with us. So we'll talk briefly about um, London and the creative industries. These things go hand in hand. Um, so in 2016, there were 882,900 jobs in London's creative sector. Um, and this means the creative economy made up around 16.9% of all jobs in the capital. So that's a huge part of the people who live here, um, you know, working inside the creative sector. It shows just how important this um, sector is to us, to London, to the UK. So again, in 2016, 33.5% of the creative economy jobs were held by workers born outside the UK. Um, so that's about 300,000 of those jobs, um, of those 882,000 jobs were held by people not from the UK. The gross value added of the creative industries in London was estimated at £42 billion per year. Um, and 19 of the top 25 European software and IT companies have their he uh, headquarters in London. And London was also recently acknowledged as the tech startup capital of Europe. So whatever industry you're looking to get into, um, this is technology based. London is a great place to start your business, both during and after your studies. So some of the industry that is based here, this is not an exhaustive list, this is not every industry, but some of the things that are really huge here, so our TV and film industry, if you think about um, Pinewood Film Studios, just outside London, it's pretty much part of London, this is where um, films like Star Wars and James Bond are filmed. Um, our animation and illustration industry is heavily based both within um, Soho and also Shoreditch and areas like this in London. Games and computing, again, um, the games industry, a lot of it is based in Soho. Some of my friends work in that and I see them quite a lot. Some of the big games publishing companies are right in Soho in the heart of London. Um, fine art and design, you can obviously find all around the city. Um, some of the biggest art galleries um, in the world are here, things like the Tate Modern, the Tate Britain and um, galleries like this is quite amazing. 
and also um, our advertising and marketing communications sector. But then fashion and textiles, if you think of everything that Rosie said before about UAL, um, there's London Fashion Week, obviously Goldsmiths with um, our fashion programme, um, it's all quite um, you know, London Fashion Week is one of the biggest fashion weeks that happens in the world. So it's quite a, an important part of who we are. But also photography and publishing. There's so many industries here that, it, you know, this list would go on and on if I, if I read them all out. But it's just to highlight how much opportunity there is here in each different sector and what it is you can hope to go on to do as well. <clears throat> so I'm going to briefly take you through some of our um, programmes. Um, so from what I'm going to look at is games design, art and design. So under, um, in our games design undergraduate programs, we've got two. So Bachelor of Science Games Programming and Bachelor of Science Creative Computing. Excuse me. So the first program, the Bachelor of Science Games Programming. So this course aims to prepare um, students who are interested in indie games or AAA console game development for a creative career in the games industry. We'll get you developing mobile, casual, indie and AAA console games from the first day you start on the program. And will also help students harness their creativity, expand technical programming skills and get to grips with the software and working practices used in the games industry. Um, you don't need to know how to code before you start this program. We'll begin um, with the basics and bring you up to a professional level over the course of the degree. And there's also an optional placement year in the industry when you take this program. So this program is three years long. However, if you take that optional placement year, it becomes four years long. So you do year one and then year two with us. Year three, you would then go and work in the industry and then you'll come back for year four and finish the degree with us. Um, it's a really good chance to enhance the skills um, you've learned on the degree, put them into practice and then put that what year of industry into the final year of your degree and make something really big for that um, really great for that final project the creative computing program so firstly just to um, point out the previous program games programming is just about games programming learning how to design and code games um, creative computing is where we look at games electronic music digital art or creative technology so we're going to prepare you for a technology focused work and coding within the creative industries so this program helps students develop the fullest range of technical skills for the creative industries um, and will prepare you for jobs such as um, being a programmer in games, uh, web development, mobile visual effects, social media, digital advertising, lots of different careers like this. So this degree is hands on and it's practical from the start. Again, like the previous program, it includes that optional placement year. Um, so students, um, you'll be creating your own games, your own mobile apps, digital artworks and web applications. But by taking this program and um, by working on practical projects throughout your degree, you will start to build the relevant skill set for your future career. Across both these programs, um, our students have gone on to work in these sort of different industries. So things like the games industry, film and TV special effects and post-production, machine learning, music technology, VR, user interface or user experience design, mobile development, full uh, stack web development, software engineering, digital theatre and e-learning. There's also many more, but this is just a small list um, of people from these two programmes in particular have gone on to, to work in. To move on to our art programmes, so our undergraduate level, we have just three. So we have BA Fine Arts Extension, BA Fine Arts, and then BA Fine Arts and Art History. The main programme is BA Fine Arts. That's our one programme in Fine Arts. The programme called BA Fine Art Extension is the Fine Art programme, but with a foundation year at the start. So the extension is actually at the start, it's not at the end, as you may think an extension would be. The BA Fine Arts and Art History programme is the Fine Art programme, but it's a joint major with our Visual Cultures Department where we add art history as well. So this programme is 50% theory and 50% practical. So let's um, have a look at our Fine Art programme. So what we, um, we think about this, what is Fine Art? So we think Fine Art describes an area of study in which students make and learn about contemporary art. So Fine Art students might create sculpture, painting, video, photography, performance, sound art, installation, drawing, or any other mediums to describe their aesthetic and intellectual ideas. The ideas expressed within the artwork are understood to be important, uh, to be as important as the medium which the artist has chosen to use. So what we mean by this, is we just have this one fine art program, but every discipline of art is put together. So you, if you want to, um, for a, a 
piece of art that you're working on, if you want to do sculpture, you can. If you want to do jewellery, you can. If you want to do painting or photography, you can. We have all the facilities. I'll show you those in a minute. You can move each way with the work you want to do and how you want to do it. Um, this course is completely open. It's who you as an artist, um, it's how you find yourself as an artist, is how best to do your work and we'll support you with that. And like we say with that last sentence on the screen, the ideas expressed with the artwork are understood to be as important as the medium. So the idea is just as important as the medium you choose to carry out and to and to divide and to implement your work, to create your work with. So we'll fully support you either way you want to go with that. The facilities that we've got, in fact, just to go back a step on this program as well, um, before I show you the facilities, on the first day of the program, you get given your own studio space that is yours for the three years that you're with us on the program. Next to you will be third years and second years, as well as the first year um, colleagues that you will have as well. So you'll constantly be learning from both our tutors, but also the students around you. You have this own studio space that's yours, that's there for you to make an absolute mess, to build your work, do whatever you like. But then you also have these facilities to then look at as well. So firstly, our casting studios, our digital media labs, textile studios as well, but also metalwork, photography, stitch and fabric studios. We've got our fine art printing studio, textile print and dye, and also woodwork studios as well. Um, so there's lots of facilities here for you to um, absolutely use to make the best of, make the most of whilst you're here. And like I said, when you're, you, if you choose to move from discipline to discipline, to use a different medium to do your work, you've got all these wonderful facilities to use, to learn how to use as well. And also don't worry, but if you enter the course as a painter and you decide you want to do some sculpture for a, a piece of work you're making and you've never done it before, don't worry, we run all these practical workshops that are there to give you the skills you need to carry out the work in the way that you envision it. All of our tutors are experts in their fields and they're there to support you and make sure you know how to do what you want to do and you can realise your ideas. So finally, we move on to um, our design programme. We have just one programme, BA Design. So similar to the BA Fine Art programme, this pulls together every area of design into one, um, one programme. So this is looking at graphic design, product, industrial, fashion, furniture, interior, and multimedia design. Um, we look at design um, as a post-disciplinary subject. We don't break them down into different areas. And the reason why is we think that each area of uh, each discipline of design, so graphic or product, or industrial etc can inform and influence the next area the next discipline of design so we like to bring this all together and what we do as well on the program is we um for each module that you're set each piece of work you're set you'll be set a brief by either our tutors or by an external company and how you answer that brief is up to you so you may do one module as a graphic designer you may do the next module as an industrial designer the module after that a furniture designer it's up to you how you approach design and how you want to piece this together and we'll fully support you in which way you want to go with that so similar to our art studios, our art program, the design students get their own studios as well. Um, but we also have these wonderful facilities for you to use and to sort of build the things or design the things that you want to do. So we've got our laser cutting studios, our metal work, woodwork studios as well. We've got plastics and uh, CAD CAM studios, so computer aided design um, studios. Another set of digital media labs for the design students as well. Then we've also got textiles for obviously the fashion design students, 3D printing and casting. And this is a photograph of one of the um, design studios. Um, so this is in um, one of our new buildings. And obviously that day for the weather wasn't so good for the photograph, but on really beautiful sunny days, there's an amazing view of London there. I absolutely promise you just have to trust me with this one. Um, so what I'm going to briefly talk about now, um, um, briefly go through what we look for in a portfolio. It's going to be very, very similar to what Rosie said about what UAL looks for. But a lot of what I'm going to say is going to be repeating and reconfirming what Rosie said. Um, but I think that's kind of a good thing. Um, some universities do look for the same thing. So it's good to get those sort of the same message and get the ideas going um, of how we look for things. 
So well, what is a portfolio to goldsmiths? For us, it's a collection of artworks, sketchbooks, objects, and then finished and unfinished ideas. We always um, want you to ensure that you include what you're really interested in. Don't show us what you think we want to see. Make sure you're showing us what you want to see. Otherwise, we'll be able to see through it. And if you get to an interview stage, it will fall apart. So it's really good that you make sure you're showing us what you're interested in. The next point for this is well, and I kind of briefly touched on it there when I mentioned interviews, is making sure you can explain your work. So if you're showing us something you're interested in and you're passionate about, you'll have much more to say about it than you would if you just put in a painting or a piece of design that you showed us because you thought we might like it. So make sure you go with what you're interested in and what you can talk about. Exactly the same as what Rosie said earlier, if you're taking photographs of your work, make sure that you're using good photography. We want to see your piece of work looking um, its best and its best light. If you use bad photography, if the photo doesn't show it, we're not going to be able to see what the work is and we're not going to be able to move forward. Um, an online web portfolio is a good way to demonstrate your work. You can do this in addition to the portfolio you send to us, but it's not essential. We don't expect you to pay for a website or hosting space or anything like this, but you can do it if you want. It's, all, it's, it's sometimes helpful. But the biggest thing with all of this is to be yourself. Like I said with the first point, absolutely show who you are as an artist and as a designer. If you don't, it's going to be quite clear that maybe you're not ready to show yourself or you haven't maybe thought about who you are as an artist or designer, but make sure what you've got there, what you put together is absolutely you. So what we look for um, between the fine art programs and the design programs, um, obviously I've not included the games programming um, pro programs in this section because we don't need a portfolio for them. That's just an application and a personal statement. But for fine art and design, we do need a portfolio. So like I said earlier, it does vary institution in, by uh, institution to institution. But Goldsmiths, we actually require something quite similar to UAL. So for fine arts, we look for 12 pieces of work. For design, we look for two to three projects. This should be recent work for Goldsmiths, stuff that you've done recently. We don't want to see what you did during your first year of high school. We want to see what you did your major project in, like the most recent things that you've got. Exactly the same as Rosie said, show your ideas, show your process and then how and why you make your work. We're really interested in the ideas, how you generated that idea, where does it come from, who is your influence. We're just as interested in how you research and tested that idea. How did you develop it? Where were your successes and where were your failures? And then we also obviously want to see the final thing. Doesn't always have to be finished. The idea is just as important as the finished projects. But like I said, it doesn't always have to be finished. You can show us how you got them. Um, the best thing to do with us as well, we um, we accept digital portfolios. So we'll request these from you um, as part of the application process. Um, so all you need to do is scan your work, take photos of it, obviously make sure the scanning or the photography is as good as it can be to show your work in the best light. But you can send these to us as PDFs, JPEGs, movie files or audio files, however your work is best presented. The next stage for us as well, after you've done the portfolio, is to go to an interview, but I'll talk about the interviews in a second. I've got some examples here of um, portfolios that were successful um, who gained entry to our programs. So the first couple of pieces I'm going to show you are just single slides. These are examples of finished pieces of work from an undergraduate fine art portfolio, and this is exactly how the student laid it out on the screen. This project here, um, it's obviously it just wants to sort of highlight the photography they've done. You can see um, they've used a, it's called like an infinity screen, I think. Um, so the wall of, uh, roll of paper that goes down behind a model or a piece of work. So that gray in the background just gives like a nice background. You can kind of see by the shadow um, how they sort of arrange the lighting. So they've made sure it's, the item is well lit. Um, so they can take a photograph of it as well. You obviously don't need to go to super professional standards, but it's however your work looks better best. So if that does mean super professional standards, that's what you may should maybe do. But this is just to highlight this is a good way of doing it. Um, and this piece of work here as well, this is um, a charcoal piece. And again, this is exactly how the artist laid out on the screen. And then I'm going to show you here, actually, what, what, one thing I do want to say about the um, fine art program, uh, the portfolios, is quite a lot of the time the students don't use any text around their work. 
you can include text if you want. Quite a lot of the questions I've had this year about portfolios is, can I include text for the fine art program? You can, you can try and explain your work, you can add just a little bit, but the most we see, don't. Sometimes it's good just to have like the title of the image, the materials you used, maybe keep it quite basic like this, but don't be writing a full essay or anything like this next to it, trying to explain what you've done. Let the artwork speak for itself, maybe just a small piece of text, the name, the size of it, the materials, something like this. That will be all you need to do. So I've got two examples to show you from um, our design program. Um, so the first one, um, this student here, uh, they made a desk uh, to read books on and it's got a lamp that lights up. You can see in the right hand side where the light um, turns on and then you can read after dark. So this is what they showed us. So firstly, this is the finished project. This is the, the photos they showed us, but then this is how they researched and tested the idea. You can see on the left of the screen where the student has been sketching like skylines of London. You can see as well in the middle kind of pages where they've been researching like, well, what kind of um, so material should be attached to, how you're going to read a book on it, how is it going to be portable. On the right, you can see how they're looking at different lights, so different lamps to find influences from. And then at the bottom row, you can see how they're putting it together and testing the idea and making sure it works. So these are several pages from a sketchbook that have been scanned together and been made into one PDF. So together, this shows us how the idea was generated, how it's researched and tested, how it was built and what the final thing looks like. Similar to this one, this student um, wanted to make a children's toy, as it explains at the top, they wanted to make a children's toy out of recycled material. So these are the, the photographs of the finished product. But then again, this is how they researched and tested it. They got the ideas from, I think it's one of their relatives um, doing drawings of um, sort of characters. And then they built the idea through here. They researched it, they found what, um, if you look at the photos at the bottom left, they found different materials they could use to build this and then how they put it together. So again, these two things together shows us how the idea was generated, how it's researched and tested, how it was built and what the finished thing looks like. And again, just another um, thing to show you as well, this is more fashion design, but just the quality of the photo, showing the item, showing the clothing and how it's put together. I don't have any slides of the research or the testing of this one, but it's just to show you the photography sort of level needed if you were showing us fashion design that you have made. So final things to show you, um, so at interview level, um, once, so once you've got through the uh, portfolio stage, we then interview. So I've got some dummy questions here to think about um, should you get to the interview stage. So for the fine art program, we'll ask you to um, describe one piece from your portfolio that you feel is particularly good and explain a little bit about its development. Um, we'll ask you things like why do you want to study fine art at Goldsmiths? Um, if you were to arrive on the course next week, how would you start working in the studio? And then we'll also ask you, what are the influences for your work and which artists do you look at? Now, this one is a bit of a trick question, this final one. We don't necessarily want to know about like the past masters like Picasso and Van Gogh and people like this. We want to know that you know what is happening in contemporary art nowadays, what's happening today. So obviously, if your influences are the, the older artists, tell us, but also make sure you tell us who you know is working in art today? Where do you find your modern influence? What is happening in the art world today? That's really what we want to know. For design, just two questions here, but a lot of the questions are very similar to the art program. So explain why you think the BA design program in Goldsmiths is the right degree program for you. And also give one example of design in the broadest sense that you love or hate and why. And remember to be analytical, to be critical and back up your ideas, like explain what it is you've thought and how can you sort of evidence this. Um, I want to highlight as well, and this would be the same for all universities that do um, art or design or things like this. We all have degree shows. You can find our degree shows on these links here. But like I said, for all universities who deliver art, go to their website, type in degree show or something like this, and you'll be able to find, especially over the last year, a lot of our degree shows have been virtual um, because of the pandemic. So you can find us here, see the work that our students do and find out you know, a little bit more about us if this is the place you feel connected to if you want to be at. Final couple of slides, I absolutely promise. I know I've said that a couple of times now, but definitely the final couple of slides. Things to point out as well, if you're thinking about creative um, jobs in the capital for all universities, um, students can now stay in the UK for up to two years after you graduated. You do need to take a new visa, but you work with the university you study that to take that visa to go through the application process. And um, it's for all individuals studying a bachelor's degree or above and who successfully complete their studies from the summer 2021, this summer onwards will be eligible to, that should say apply, I've made a spelling mistake, so there's a Y missing. But yeah, from this summer, you'll be able to apply. Um, 
so this means you can stay in the UK for two years, can work in almost any job. So if you're thinking about one of those creative careers, come and do it, come and do one of the degrees, and then you can come and stay for two years afterwards. At the end of those two years, if you want to stay, you will need to get that company who you work for, or maybe another company to sponsor you for a new visa, but that's for them. Um, you've got two years to, you know, get some experience, work in different jobs and build your portfolios up. And those jobs you can think about. So being an artist, the jobs include either working for a company or being self-employed in those two years, which is obviously really important in the um, games, art and design industry. So you can think about being an artist, an illustrator, art director, graphic designer, games designer, the list just goes on and on. There's so much opportunity in London um, in the creative industries. Um, it'll be um, silly not to think about it. So thank you so much for sitting through this. I appreciate it. I've said quite a lot of this similar to what Rosie said, but I think it's quite good as well because it shows you how quite similar some universities are with things you need in your portfolios and things like this. So you don't have to worry too much about different things. Um, you can kind of build your portfolio together from one place. Um, again, here's my contact details. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to email me or you can message me. And I would thoroughly recommend on these links going to our YouTube to Goldsmith London. There's lots of really great videos where we speak to our students. You get to see the university and explore what it is we do. So thank you so much for sitting through this um, today. Thank you, Jay. Um, thank you, actually, uh, thank you uh, both uh, for this uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. It's very useful. Uh, we have a couple of questions. I'm sure while we start answering the questions, there will be more coming in. Uh, let's start. Um, this is uh, one of the councillors asking, is it possible to have this PowerPoint via email to use as a resource for our students? Uh, we certainly share the recording of the webinar. We'll uh, upload them on YouTube. But in terms of presentations, Rosie and Jake, uh, they have, you know, um, uh, they should, you know, uh, permit, give a permit. Would you like to share your slides uh, with councillors, maybe? I'm certainly happy to share the recording. Um, no problem um, for to share the recording at all. That's fine. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, do we have to know how to uh, see clothes to be accepted by a fashion school undergraduate level? Um, I'll, I'll go first if that's all right, Jake. Um, the answer is it's difficult. It depends which subject, of course, that you're um, applying to. I mean, if you're applying to, say, a fashion business course, then no. Um, I mean, it's always handy to know um, how clothes work and how they, they kind of fit together. But it entirely depends on the course that you are applying for. So please just all I can say is check the website. It will always say on, you know, what we're looking for and it will say all this kind of skills you need and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry to not give a, a sort of more direct answer, but it, it really does depend. OK, thank you. In which ways MA portfolios are different from undergraduate portfolios? Uh, by the way, Jake, the, do you have any answer for the previous question? Sorry. No, I would I would say exactly the same as what Rosie said. I think it because the one thing would be a little bit different, but also the same answer. Um, because where we have fashion design as part of our design program, it will be how you frame yourself as a fashion designer. Um, so it depends on how you contextualize what it is you do. I would say it's probably an important skill maybe to have, but it's one of those things that all depends on how you're approaching yourself and how you want to go forward. So very similar answer to what Rosie said. <laughs> OK, uh, maybe uh, we can start uh, answering uh, with you uh, for this question. In which ways MA portfolios are different from undergraduate portfolio? Um, in some ways, not really. They're not that different in terms of the number of items you need to have in your folder or how you display yourself. But what we would be expecting from either a fine art portfolio or a design portfolio for MA at Goldsmiths is a really clear idea on a maybe singular project. When you're approaching undergraduate level for either art or design, we're quite expecting you to not really know what it is you want to do. Some people will have a really concise portfolio where you can clearly see this is a painter influenced by this one artist. But there are lots of people who are obviously still young and still trying to find their ideas. And you can sometimes see in their portfolio that they're still finding their voice and that's OK. Whereas at MA level, it's going to be a lot clearer. This is what I want to do on the year, the 15 month program I've got. And I'm going to absolutely use my time to really do this project. That's kind of what I would expect. Um, 
I know, Rosie, hopefully you don't say anything completely different. <laughs> no, not at all. I think that they're definitely really good points in terms of especially the kind of being concise and being, I think, for MA level, we just need that kind of extra level of, of knowing that that is you. Um, uh, for, for us, we actually, I mean, we we because we ask for things like study proposals as well, these can be quite uh, tricky to, to write. So um, we have actually done some webinars with our academics on MA stu study proposals and portfolios. So please don't get in touch um, with me and I can send you a recording through of one of those. Um, I don't think we have any coming up at the moment, but I can certainly send a recording through. So um, I don't know if I put my details anywhere, but um, either way, get in touch with Semra who can uh, pass it on to me and I'll, I'll be happy to send that over. Yes, uh, I can get I mean, I can get your details uh, and share with the participants later on Perfect. Uh, with the same email with the recording. Uh, one final question. Uh, if we don't have any more questions, this is the final question. Do we have to be talented at sketching to be accepted by a fashion school or is it enough to be creative and indicate what we want on the paper? There's more for one for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, again, it's a bit of a, a similar question to the sewing one um, in respect that sketching is a very important skill. Um, however, we don't look for you know the most talented sketches for necessarily for fashion what a lot of students will use is they'll use things such as textiles instead they'll use physical materials um if you if you know that sketching isn't your um uh ideal sort of skill i would always advise going to workshops um to try and make that skill better because in some courses we we do require um a good sketching um skill to sort of basically communicate to us essentially your ideas your designs um but there are also other ways so yes you can use your creative skills and uh, your creative mind to kind of use other ways such as textiles and materials to kind of uh indicate uh, that to us as well but I would work on your sketching skills. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, we have a, a very good question. Uh, either of you can uh, volunteer for that. What subject would you recommend for a student who is creative in spirit and ideas, however, has no talent or desire for design? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so what questions cre um, creative in? Um, in creative in spirit and ideas. Oh, right. OK. Our has no talent or desire for design. Well, the thing is with stuff like this. So in, in my spare time, I like to make music and I like to take photographs. And the amount of people that I speak to, especially about music, who go, oh, I'd love to be a musician, but I can't sing or I can't play the guitar. It's like, well, I couldn't when I started, but I practiced and I tried and it takes hard work. And not everyone is like born gifted as a drawer or a designer or a painter. And it does take some serious hard work in this. So I think it's obviously brilliant that you're like, you know, you're spirited and you've got these ideas. But firstly, don't be so hard on yourself. Like you probably can do some of the things that you want to do. But the other thing is practice, like keep on practicing. There probably is an area of design where you could just get by on the ideas and never draw them. and you know, tell everyone else what it is you want. But I would really recommend like investing time in yourself, be it through short courses or free things you find on YouTube or something like this. Because yeah, like I said, I don't think you should be so hard on yourself. Like I can't, I'm not talented. Like no one was when they first started. They just practiced. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Rosie, uh, I know that you have some summer courses. Maybe there are some summer courses where um, uh, students can, you know, uh, Im improve their talent or you know desire yeah absolutely i mean i think jake aren't actually answered that very well i'm glad you went first <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely there are short courses summer courses to kind of um you know start that sort of uh, bigger journey if you like but also i think it's important to note that there's probably a course out there for you but you just don't realize that that's where you're supposed to be because perhaps you haven't heard of it before or you know we live in a world where we have virtual reality design as a course i mean whoever thought 50 years ago for example that that would ever exist 
um, you know, we have so many different courses in in across so many different subject areas. And actually, if you do your research and look into all the courses, there might even already be something which you actually already have a skill in um, which you could do. So um, definitely do your research. But uh, as just as, as I said, what Jake said, um, practice, uh, go out there, try things. It's all about trying and and making mistakes. That's how you learn. So, um, yeah, absolutely. OK, thank you. Um, well, that that was the last question. Uh, I think uh, we can finish the day, uh, finish this session. Thank you very much. Uh, the, as I said, it was very comprehensive. Uh, thank you for joining us today and also the, uh, our audience. Thank you for uh, joining us today. It was uh, I hope uh, you found uh, the information uh, shared with you useful. Uh, we can close the session now. Thank you very much and have a good day all. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Take care. You too. Bye bye.